As the name suggests, Holderness is all about nature. Here you will find expansive beaches, indigenous forests, mountains and estuaries with a lot of bird life. It's a small town. Let's go down and check it out. Holderness is situated in the heart of the famous garden route, right next to the N2. Taking a walk through town, doing my first impressions so far. Very neat, quite bustling for a first day. The sun is out, the weather is good, it's winter now in South Africa. The weather hasn't been that good, but today is a beautiful day, so it's a great day to shoot some footage. Let's see what we find. My name is Musa. Uh, what I'm doing, I do people art. Uh, pebbles, pick the pebbles from the beach, from rural as but see, it will make, will make different type of products. Tell like, me about what you're doing now, yeah. That's a, a tree of life. That's a tree of life. Everyone knows about the tree of life, but the meaning of the end, the tree of life. But how is this town? No, this is, this is an excellent town. This is an excellent town. That's one of the best towns in, in Garden Road. I want to have my first beer because I like having beer. <laughs> and I just met the owner of this bar. What's your name, sir? Jaden. Jaden. We had Pollocks in Wilderness. Uh, thanks for coming and uh, being us, eh? <laughs> and so I'm going to have my first beer, you know, of Jaden. And he tells me you also do live music. We have live music here yeah, every weekend. We try to have, especially in season, we try to have every day. So, yeah, oh, it would be nice to come check Pollocks out. <laughs> thanks. So, yeah, if you're in town of Wilderness, the town is buzzing, man. It's like uh, really cool. Uh, come and check out the bar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amber Ale, decent craft beer. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna give you my first impression of town now. Uh, it's a lot busier than I thought it would be. Cheers, by the way. First beer in town. Decent craft beer. Quite a few varieties here. Yeah. Nice and fruity. So, yeah, it's busy. It's, uh, it's a very nice, relaxed vibe. Locals are sitting everywhere, drinking beer and having lunch. The first two people I spoke to, just as I came in, somebody introduced himself to me, very friendly. Also, a filmmaker asked me what I'm doing with my tripod. And the second guy I met was a photographer. So, people are very friendly, and it's nice and clean and neat, and it's a beautiful town because it's in the mountains. So, the first impressions today is really, really good. I'm happy to be here. Looking forward to vlogging. So far, such a good experience, and they gave me a good tip. The owner told me there's a community here that lives in a cave, like a cave type of thing. If you walk down a railroad track, you get to a community, and they live there in a cave, and apparently that's interesting. And obviously, I want to do interesting vlogs, so I think uh, I'm going to check that out. But first, I'm going to go to the guest house and just chill a bit, and uh, then we will. Uh, Continue. So I was just talking to myself and the camera about the grot, the cave, and this guy said he's from there, so he's gonna just give us a quick review about it. Well, the cave, um, yeah, it's been going since basically since the, there was an avalanche that closed down the the railway, so it was a restaurant then. Uh, it was taken over by somebody, and ever since then, then it's it's been a house of God actually. In fact, uh, it still is to this day. You'll find ten of us living there. Um, yeah, it's <laughs> it's something else, eh? It's so, so um, can I come and come and check you guys yeah, out? Yeah, please do. You're you're welcome. In fact, everyone is welcome. Eh? I just arrived at my lodgings for the next two nights here in Wilderness, and it is spectacular. I'm gonna tell you, this is the best place I've ever stayed in. It's so beautiful, and I'm so thankful 
a moon time guest lodge thank you this is so cool it's gonna make my vlogging experience and job so much easier I'm gonna show you around check it out this is the main room Now for the best part, check out this view. Right on the river, there's a jet here, there's a beautiful pond here, the garden is awesome. Yeah, it's just so cool, check it out. Check this out, mini bar stacked with beer, tampers, white wine, I mean I can get used to this, this is cool, and uh, the prices are actually not bad at all, pretty normal. Up here we've got the hot tech, so we're ready for a party, you know. Checked in, comfortably in my room very happy amazing accommodation so now it's hi ho hi ho off to work i go let's go check out the rest of the place i'm back in town i listened to some uh, joy division so i'm pumped and ready to vlog so wilderness is right next to the end two you come down the mountain the mountain pass and this is where the beautiful part of the garden route starts the green and lush part of the garden route. If you come down the path to wilderness on the left hand side is the town and on the other side is the beach. Apparently it's a long beautiful stretch of beach and there's a little opening here under the end too you can walk towards the beach and that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna check out the beach. That's what I call fancy graffiti, that's almost like a little gallery. And here's a railway line and we're going to walk down here a bit later to uh, the other place that they call the, the Grot or the cave where the people live. It's winter now, so the beach is a bit empty, but I can promise you, as far as beaches go, it won't get any better than this. Imagine this beach in summer. It's spectacular. This is Lienke's clip. In early times, when life was as rough as the ocean, people depended on the sea's bounty for survival. Linky was an oyster gatherer who harvested the produce at these rocks at the end of the beach. At one point in her life, she fell in love with a man who eventually betrayed her with another. Her grief drove her to drown herself from these rocks. Came to this little area, it's a little braai and picnic area next to the beach. And from here, I'm going to walk to that cave place and see where the people live. And the only drawback from that wonderful, wonderful guest lodge is, it's so great. But I asked them do they have a braai because 
people who watch this channel know I like to braai I'm Afrikaner and no, no braai there, unfortunately. They've got the uh, thatch roofed um, places there so it can burn easily. But you can come and braai here. I mean, there's a lot area here. They've got public braais here. I might even do that before I leave, who knows. I am pleased to notice that this area is very neat. All the areas here in this whole place, it's kept well. The municipality is spending money to keep it tidy and neat and well looked after. And that is good. Look at this beautiful, beautiful mural here where the public toilets are. I mean, this is a really awesome mural. Is this the place you could go? You walk down to the cave where the yes, people live. Yes. So, what's your name? Bernie. And you have a little stall here, and yes. I see you can braai here and speak to you. <laughs> yes. Thanks, man. Looking good. Thank you, sir. This is the railway track, the old railway track towards the community that's living here. Like they say at the cave, there used to be a restaurant there. Apparently it's not far, but it's getting a bit late. And I don't want to walk around here in the dark and fall my ass off. So let's see if we make it. And if we don't make it, we'll come back tomorrow. But it should be interesting. It's beautiful. As you can see, it's very magical. It's like plants growing all over across the railway line. Imagine you are a railway hobo and you travel on the railway lines. This will be like hobo heaven. And there's somebody coming from the other side. I just spoke to this guy, I was a bit worried that it could be unsafe here and he told me there's one guy that walked down here now that he has a knife or sometimes he has a knife and he's a bit dangerous he has a bit of a scallum a tzotzi, like we say in South Africa but uh, he's not big, I'm big uh, I'll just watch him but I'm here now so I'm gonna do it anyway but uh, you know, these people that drop other people and tourists <laughs> let's see what happens Watch out for that guy. Interesting. Where's it? Oh, is he ready to fall like that? What will he do? Who will he do? Niks om jou uit te waai nie. I arrived at the place. It's a beautiful community living here at the cave. Next to the sea, the ocean. And uh, wow, it's amazing. Who would know or expect something like this here? This is really cool. It's a Caymans River coming down there. And there's a community living here. And it looks amazing. It's art all over the place. Uh, wow, how amazing.
What an amazing place and way to live. So there are chairs here, you can sit and watch the ocean. Uh, it's so beautiful. What an amazing space. I have to get back now. And that one guy, apparently, that's a dangerous guy with the knife. He might be waiting up here for me in the bushes because he's asking me, what are you doing with the camera stuff? I told him to fuck off. But, uh, you know, apparently he's a bit of a problem and a nuisance. And he likes to handle a knife and rob people. So, but uh, let's see what happens. Let's hope for the best. That other guy told me it's better to walk down the beach, not through the bush on my way back because of that torchy guy that might want to try and rob me, but this little small guy but he's got a knife and I don't have one, but uh, I've got a, a mooring stick, but uh, I'm not going to take a chance and I don't feel like drama and aggravation, so let's do the beach. I have to say, I don't think this is an unsafe place. Everything looks very legit and safe. But there's always one or two guys in any place that have a bit of attitude, that might be a bit aggressive, that might be a bit sick in the head, that might take a chance, so always be careful. But I think that's pretty rare, but uh, hey man, South Africa is not the safest place, obviously. And it's better to be waking, waking. <laughs> But uh, what a great end to the first day of shooting this vlog. That was an excellent first day of shooting, so I'm going to retire of a cold beer while I enjoy this amazing view. I'm not gonna lie, I completely overslept because it was peaceful and a great bed and I just slept really well. So I'm having a real filter coffee because I am a coffee snob 
and this is a four star guest house and uh, then we're gonna hit the road and see what else we find in this stuff it's another beautiful day so got really lucky of the weather on this one Behind me is the Toast River, flowing here through town, kind of cuts the town in two sections, like the main part of town is on that side. And on this side, where the guest house is, also where I slept last night, it's like a residential area, very tranquil, lots of bird life. Apparently you can do canoe trips down here. There's also a boardwalk on the other side, a footpath on a boardwalk where you can walk down the river and check out the bird life very relaxing and a beautiful space nice space to wake up to something else that is unusual for today is that I have a vehicle usually I don't have a vehicle I'm hitchhiking taking buses and minibus taxis and walking everywhere and it's really hard to follow a town or a place if you can't get to places conveniently so I think it's gonna make a huge difference for this vlog just having a vehicle so thank you for borrowing me your vehicle, Fred. It really helps a lot. Does anybody know of any company that would like to sponsor this vlog with a vehicle so I can vlog better? Let me know. Comment down below. Give me ideas. It makes a huge difference. It would seem that the boardwalk is temporarily closed, but we can walk down a little bit to the first lookout little point here. And there's a lot of birds here today. There's a big swarm, it's probably the wrong word to use, swarm, or flock of birds here. I just spoke to a local that's been living here for 20 years and he says he's never seen this amount of birds, such a huge flock on here ever in 20 years, of these birds all together. So it's a kind of a lucky occasion that we're having here. I don't know what bird it is, I'll try and find out from a local. And hopefully we can also get some info on why there are so many now concentrated here on the river. So if you're into birding, this is an excellent place. It would seem that this path, this walkway is in a bit of ill repair and that's why it's closed. But I just saw another guy, I'm assuming a local, walk past here and going through this little boundary here where it's broken. And I'm going to do the same to show you a little bit of it. It's not the right thing to do. You shouldn't do it if the sign says it's closed, it's closed. But hey, I'll, I'll do it for you guys. Let's take a little walk and let me just cross through here and hopefully I'm not going to fall in the water. I just crossed here and I just met this man, are you local? Uh, newly, yeah, newly living in, down in George from Joburg, been here since January, yeah. And your name? Andrew. Andrew. Yeah. And he also told me that he's never seen so many birds, and just, what, what are the birds again? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that those are called darters, um, yeah, don't you normally see them in such massive groups, normally see them kind of in pairs or individually around and not a lot all together at once, so that is quite phenomenal to see so many there all at once. I've never, I've never seen it anywhere, in fact, um, before. So we're lucky, guys. Uh, tell me, how is it to live in wilderness? Yeah, I don't quite stay in wilderness, but I'm around the corner at Vic Bay, uh, down the road, and, but yeah, this is pretty much my home, which I'm grateful for, and it's, it's just unbelievable. This is my favorite part of the whole world, in fact. I've traveled to America, Europe, New Zealand, other places and spaces, and, uh, yeah, nothing compares to this area of the world. Wilderness, Sedgefield, Nasna, Plett, Victoria Bay. It's just unbelievable. Great. Yeah. Thanks a lot. My oh, pleasure, man. Cool. The African darter is also known as the snake bird because it swims with only its neck above the water. Its feathers contain no natural oil and so it can often be seen drying its feathers in the sun along the riverbanks. They are highly territorial 
and can gather in flocks of up to 100 birds. It's such a gorgeous walkway and it's so relaxing to walk down here. And this must be such a boon to the town, but it's neglected and it's old and unkept. I really hope whoever is in charge of this walkway gets the budget or the funding to fix it because it's so cool. It's sad to see it go, so please if you see this, hey man, do something about it. Peace. I'm guessing we are about five kilometers out of town and there is this amazing camping spot right next to the Toast River and there's no one here so well kept standing here in front of someone's amazing garden obviously very green here yeah? very beautiful and there's a hiking trail here yeah? and uh, indigenous forest all over of the bird life flowers so lots of walks obviously in the forest so we can uh, take a short walk in the forest not too far because I've got a lot of stuff to do still but uh, yeah so let's check out this walk it's the Pied Kingfisher trail into the indigenous forest I think it goes along the river actually. Getting to some sort of road here, yeah, so it's probably not the most foresty walk, but it's a walk anyway, and there's a forest all around. So, right next to the river, really beautiful forest. Maybe, if I have time, we can maybe do a bit more of a foresty trail, narrow trail into some kind of forest somewhere. We'll see if I get time. So, not a real forest trail. We're kind of going back to the town now, and we are in a residential area, so. I wouldn't call this a true forest trail but uh, you can walk it all the way back to town and it's beautiful Walking back to the car in this area is known as Ferino so there's a Ferino hotel and a Ferino backpackers I want to go to both uh, the Ferino backpackers is kind of a legendary backpackers when I was a young man as a safari guide I used to bring people there groups, tourist groups and uh, maybe, who knows, when I get my tours kicked off again I might bring people here again, who knows Hi guys, uh, my name is Wesley I'm with Very No Backpackers and we do all sorts of things here from live music to weddings and all sorts of events we do adventures, kayaks, horse riding, paragliding and uh, we've got a lovely place to come and stay at the backpackers here and yeah we're situated in wilderness in the garden route and come and check it out nice little mini forest here we can sit and chill you're gonna walk through the place now check it out also a nice bar the guy also told me now they are doing little mini concerts here like tiny concerts which they record 
and they are starting to put it on their YouTube channel. Uh, should be interesting. So music vibe, very arty vibe around here. But I'll see if I can get the link to the YouTube channel and put it in here and go check it out. Let's check the old place. Let's do a walkthrough. Was here, none of this was here. It was still bare. gardening going on here so you get a bit of a hippie forest child vibe here which used to be all over the place before it became like some people say a bit of a town with older people it used to be full of barefoot hippies told anybody I'm coming obviously so I'm just rushing in here and the place is still not made up after some guests left and stuff like that so just a quick view into the house this is like a dorm section it seems It's just a quick walk through, so very idyllic, very beautiful, great place to come and stay. You might stay here forever. I see they also have a tent here, and a, like a permanent tent type of vibe. It's the first time we see that here. Very cool. Check that out. Forest all around. So it's lunch, and I think it's beer o'clock. I can have a beer. Yeah, let's go check out the hotel, very no hotel, but apparently they have a live band or a singer-songwriter here tonight and my plan is, because it's Friday and I have a car this time, is to do the nightlife of uh, Wilderness, so I'll probably be back and we can check out the band tonight or the singer-songwriter or the music, the live music anyway. We're just down the road a few hundred meters now at the ferry, now I see they call themselves a resort Never been here, it's quite a famous place, been here for ages. They even have a little health spa here I see. So let me go and get permission to see if I can film here. It's a lot of cars here so it must be popular, a lot of things going down. I just spoke to the people at reception, they're very friendly, they said I can take a video for the vlog and they're going to tell us a little bit something. Okay. Guys, please tell me your names and then a bit about the place. Hi everyone, my name is Carl and this is my colleague Dean. So this is a Fairy Noah Hotel. It's been here for 100 years. It's our birthday actually, the November. So the hotel is 100 years old. Can you imagine that? And it's been recently refurbished. So please come visit us. Okay, let's check it out. Huge kitchen. It's got that old hotel feeling, which you don't get it much anymore. I love this. I love that old hotel when I was young and we were children and we went to these old hotels. And Sunday had these lunches. That's that feeling you get. And you rarely see that anymore. It's so cool. I'm 
near the Ferino Hotel, next to the Taj River, famous hotel, and apparently this year it's 100 years old. And it's so cool, it's got that old hotel feeling, but with a modern twist, very neat, beautiful hotel next to the river, check it out. What a place for a sun set drink with your favorite person. I mean, come on. <laughs> and what makes this hotel even more impressive for me? Dry. You can dry here. Very important. Right next to the river. And super soft green lawn, so if you have too many, you can just take a snooze after you ate your choppy. Many of these older hotels are kind of a bit derelict, but this one is pristine. There's a lot of people working here. And the uh, place is like excellent. It's, it's perfect. I mean, there's nothing I can find wrong. Everything is working. Everything looks perfect. And uh, yeah, the upkeep is amazing. There's just people walking all over, uh, maintaining the place. Very nice to see. So it's a perfect mix between uh, like an old school hotel feeling a real hotel and like with a modern arty vibe and very very well kept. So there's like a beautiful little well kept little herb and vegetable garden here so I'm assuming the kitchen is using this to cook with. What's your name, sir? Henry. Henry, did I use this in the kitchen, extra kitchen to cook food and stuff? Yeah, um, mostly the lettuce, spinach, cauliflower, broccoli. Cool, man. Thanks. You, you guys got paradise here. You've got it sorted. You got it figured out. These guys figured it out, eh? They recreated paradise on Earth. I don't know how. What the secrets and stuff, but they, they figured it out. It's like the base of everything. And not a fire pit, but joy is fire. That was a very nice hotel. As you can tell, I am well impressed. Whew. Yeah, I want to come and park off here for a month and bride every day. Once I'm a YouTube millionaire, definitely. I'm back at the bridge and there's a start to, uh, I think for reals, forest trail, more real than the other one. Let's just do a little bit. I just want to show you the trail and the forest. Just, uh, just a quick look. Okay, apparently you can't just walk the trails here, you need to get a wild card and a permit and I can't get it here, you have to go to the office. Uh, I'm assuming he's got a card. And that some spiel, just to, I just wanted to show you like a couple of hundred meters of the forest trail. And I don't think I'll have time to do all that. But we in the forest now and you can get a little bit of a taste of the trail. So let me show you where the trail goes down. You can apply for a wild card that will give you access to many forest trails on the Cape Nature website. It would seem it's hard to get into the forest here without paying somebody something for a permit or whatever. Yeah, that's how it goes. But uh, a guy told me there's a little path here. Walk down here 
uh, there's no pavement or anything and I just wanted to show you the forest and give you a bit of a vibe about the forest because the forest is a very important part of this town in this area so let's walk down this little path for a short while and just get the feeling for the forest So this is not really the forest forest on the other side of the road into the mountain but it gives you an idea about the vegetation here and there's lots of paths around here in the forest that you can go jogging or walking or picnicking or whatever but I'm not going to bore you with too much of the same in the end the forest is a forest so it's just a short little clip about the forest vibe. So I know you need a permit because it's for your own safety, they need to know how many people are in the forests in case people get lost and all that because people actually do get lost in places and even die or whatever but something deep inside me just resists the idea that people have to pay to see the nature in their own place on their own planet. Now the indigenous forest that was put here by the universe now you have to pay to see your own wild garden. You were born into this planet, this belongs to everybody. And now it's all kinds of permits, and paying and people making money out of it. Maybe as an old hippie, not an I'm a hippie, I didn't identify as a hippie, but when I was young, I was kind of like hippie-like. That thing is still in me, it just feels wrong. You know what I'm saying? Leave a comment. I think the biggest bonus and the best part of this accommodation is of course just the venue here on the river. It's just birds everywhere and it's just so relaxing and beautiful. All this peace and tranquility is really nice but I think it's time to go and check out the nightlife in wilderness. Let's see what we find. All right, this one's for Free Wild World. This is an original song called Blues Troop. Sun is about to set in the center of town, so let's see what we find. It is off season, it's not tourist season, it is winter now. So the old town won't be as full as it is when it's pumping of tourists and a party vibe in summer. Now they just here to see you. Evidently a very popular pizza place. Place is packed. Let's check the place across the road and then there's a bar here. When I was much younger, long long time ago, I lived here in Hoekville and it wasn't as happening there in this town and there was this bar I went to every now and then like once a month and apparently that's where all the youngsters hang out now and it's still there so we'll go check that out I think I'll have my first drink there let's check this place out Hi guys, 
I'm Jean. I'm the general manager here at Delali Wilderness. Um, welcome to uh, Eclectic and Small Menu where everything is of the best quality possible. We do some excellent cocktails and we serve a wide variety of cuisines. Do you have like a signature dish? A uh, signature dish from my kitchen would be my pork belly roasted on bubble and squeak with a horseradish sauce. That's pretty good. I'm a big fan of this open kitchen vibe because it's just such a nice atmosphere. It brings the kitchen into the restaurant. People can see what's going on and it's a really nice vibe in here. I love it. Looks like a bit more upmarket. That looks really good. Next time I want to come and eat the whole menu. It smells delicious, it looks delicious, and it's such a cool vibe. It's good music, it's a progressive, funky, first world kitchen vibe, if you can put it that way. I don't know if it, that is, those are the right words, but that's the feel of it. It's really cool. Okay, let's see what's next. The place was empty, so I decided to move on. I've got some people in the back here telling me there's two pipes. Yeah, I was at the one when I arrived, so we'll check out both. But it's a bit more of a vibe here. And then there's still the backpack, it's the live music and the backpackers as well. But uh, let's start here. Yeah. First drink for the evening. Smaller pub with a biker theme vibe, so quite intimate. Back where I was when I arrived here first. My time now. I'm standing under a light here because my imaginary film crew is not here because they're not real. So that was cool. That bar was really cool. But like I always say, every town is completely unique and there's usually a little place for everybody in a town. So this was more like just a nice pop of nice music and just a nice party crowd. The biker bar was like a bit more, I don't know, the biker crowd. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> a bit more of a slightly aggro vibe if i have to be honest but uh um, that's cool everybody's got their own thing going and now i'm going to the backpackers to see the live music there and that will be the hippie crowd and a relaxed crowd so it will be like going from the one to the middle to the other one you know what i'm saying so there's like a vibe and a place for everybody usually in old towns let's go check out the nice relaxed laid back Live music, folky, hippie vibe at the backpackers. Let's do it. There's an interesting scene here. There's a bike just running with a helmet on. Nobody here. Somebody went to the shop and just left their bike running. I think for whatever reason. That's funny. So a very relaxed and chilled vibe, yeah. Different vibes. Let's check this out for a while. A line of tequilas, I think I'm at the right place. <laughs> So 
know, if you had a few beers and tequilas, then you can come and get some food here just across from the bar for the hangover crowd. You know, you get the, the munchies. What type of food do you make? Uh, we make different food. We make breakfast, lunch and dinners. But dinners every night is different dinners. Every Wednesday we make buri rolls and chips or bacon and chips. So what is the most popular if people have too many tequilas? What do they come and eat? What is the best? Most of the time it's uh, bacon and chips. Bacon and chips? Yes. Great. Anyway, that was cool at the Backpackers of Music and had nice meaningful conversations around the fire. Left there now, I think I'm about over the Friday night. I'm going to check out this place again where we were earlier when it was quiet, maybe one night cap. Then I think this part of the vlogging is over. This part of the episode is over then. Um, that was nightlife in the winter time in wilderness and tomorrow we will do a bit of the town check it out the commercial side of town on a saturday morning and maybe one or two other things and that will be the vlog or oh, that will be this episode so uh, cool let's go check this out <laughs> still pretty quiet yeah nothing going on really so i think i'm gonna call it a night Yay! thank you so much It's the morning, beautiful morning next to the river here at Moon Tide, Guest Lodge. Having a great breakfast and I went for the biggest one, obviously. And I also met new people, new friends here. They're sitting there, they're a married couple. And they follow the vlog there as well. <laughs> nice to meet you guys. Thank you. <laughs> so it's the last day of vlogging here in Wilderness. I'm going to go to the market later, a little market, and also just see what's going on in down on a Saturday morning and that will be the end of the vlog but now I'm just going to enjoy this beautiful breakfast now that's real coffee beautiful Saturday morning in town I'm just going to show you the commercial side of the town and what you need to know if you come here do you need to worry about groceries and stuff? no it's a big spa here of everything you need Very interesting little spice and obviously it smells amazing in here because they roasting coffee here. Awesome space, so it's like coffee shop, roastery, antiques, old stuff, beautiful stuff. It's too much for me to show you. You have to come and check it out for yourself. Doing the coffee review, and I just got brought fresh beans as well. Oh, it's still warm. And it smells amazing, so it's freshly roasted. First of all, go with beans always, and then you have to grind your own beans, obviously. And if it's freshly roasted, it's next level. So let's taste the coffee. It smells really good. And it's super, super nice and super fresh, and it's complex flavors dark chocolate thing going on and it's some of the best coffee I've had so I recommend come on have coffee here <laughs> mm. so in the back of the garden there's jam which like in a corner and they're making sandwiches and I'm gonna have a little conversation with them now let's check it out what are you doing? I'm making a ham cheese and tomato sandwich with some Dijonese. 
And the bread, is it like good bread? It's sourdough bread. Um, this one specifically is brown, but it's very good bread. It is handmade by a lady here in Hookville that we get our supply from. So, and what's your name? My name is Lanita. And what, what are you saying? Tell me about oh. your little face. Hello, hello. So, uh, my name is Henry. I'm the owner of Jamwich. And uh, we do gourmet and breakfast salmis here. What is your like your top range salmi or your best salmi? The best salmi is definitely our one pan bacon, egg and cheese and our jamwich and the sweet bell tea. And we also do a lot of uh, vegan options as well. The falafel, free homemade uh, falafel patties and uh, potato roasties. Some super amazing guest house going on here I think. With an amazing garden, it looks like a palace. Looks like a fairy tale place. Check it out. And I've got sushi as well. Seafood grills and cocktails. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, the grill. Or the girls. We'll make that out. Let's check that out. We're going to check that out now. My name is Joy. I'm a manager of the Girls Restaurant here in Wilderness. Uh, the restaurant has been going since 2007 at different locations, but we've been currently here at the Palms. Uh, our selection of food uh, starts with breakfast, lunch and dinners. We do tapas, we do seafood. Our prawns are phenomenal. Uh, we've got a selection of steaks and different sauces and toppings. And the reason it's called it the Girls is because uh, when they have their first restaurant, uh, it's called the Riverside Cafe. Uh, customers always refer to, let's go to the Gold for dinner. So it's like a little shopping complex here. And there's an art gallery as well. And a few other stuff. Let's check it out. Cute little shop. Right across from here, there's a large hotel. Maybe I should just pop in there quickly and see what it's about. Oh, bit of a formal corporate vibe. This hotel, obviously, very fancy. But uh, yeah, this is your style. There's something like this here as well. I forgot the rugby is about to start. I need to get to the other bar. Just finishing the shot here. Super large, super neat, very nice hotel. Very spacious, it's large. And uh, a lot of Africans in Africa, in African countries, can learn from this. People are very open here. They say, Yeah, take a video. I'm doing a YouTube channel. Nobody in this town said no. Everybody was just open and said yes, take footage. And a lot of African countries and African shop owners, they say, no, 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 you, you need permission, you don't just take a video. And they just block YouTubers and YouTubing and vlogging. But it's bad for you. The reason why people like this prosper is because they're open to promotion and open to YouTubers and open to show the world their stuff. So yeah, if you have a shop or anything in Africa, just be open, let people video it. Don't be so hesitant and defensive. Because you're selling stuff anyway, you might as well market yourself and get free marketing. Okay, let's go check the rugby on the other side in the little pub. And there's also a square there of little shops and stuff. I was here last night at this bar 
and in front here is this little place where there's a lot of shops and open air alfresco vibe so let's check that out quickly hi my name is Freya and I work here in Milkwood village and we sell bohemian style stuff Buddhas and beautiful things Okay, yeah, so this is the Erika Turby Art Gallery. She's a very talented artist, as you can see. She sells her paintings all over the world. Here is Bert. It's making a loud noise. Anyway, I drove through town wilderness a couple of kilometers out of the town up the Seven Passes Road. And I'm here now in front of what they call the map of Africa. Beautiful view. They also have paragliding going from here. But uh, why is it called the map of Africa? That will become obvious when you see the view. Okay guys, this is the last stop. I'm here at Kaiman's River Mouth traffic going across here over the bridge you can probably hear it and there's a little market here when I came in here I said I am doing a YouTube vlog it's like a bit of free exposure for you but the rule here is if you want to visit the market you have to be a customer for me that is the weirdest thing I've never heard of that it's like that doesn't make any sense logical sense for me or it's counterintuitive if you want to open a market and run it like you have to spend money otherwise you can't get into the premises which is not a good start, which I think is a bit silly, but I think the guy is, I mean, I'm gonna to have to be honest in this vlog, but I think the guy does not have a lot of parking space, but it's not a welcoming feeling if he could stop at the gate and say, listen man, you have to spend money, otherwise you can't come to the market. It's weird. But we're here now, we're gonna check it out, and I just wanna say for the guys out there, the people following my vlog and liking what I'm doing, I appreciate you. I love you. I've got love in my heart for humanity. And thank you for supporting me. I really appreciate it. So let's go check out this market. We have to spend money. <laughs> I'm going to buy a beer, obviously. Let's go. Is there more rules I have to be aware of for the market? Yes. Because you, know, you have to spend money, which you is very weird. You have to buy something to be a customer. That is so strange. I've never heard of this ever in my life. <laughs> that is totally counterintuitive to marketing. It's yeah, most of the people. So why do you do it like that? It's the rules. That's why it's empty, because nobody wants to come here. I'm having a Jack Black lager. I was hoping it's not going to be too expensive and it's not, it's decent prices, but you know, once you come in here and you're forced to spend money, they can charge you anything they like because now you catch it. You have to spend. <laughs> you're like, go and get out.
Make no mistake, it's a beautiful space, but there's nobody here, and I can understand why, because once you force people to spend money, first of all, it's not a welcoming feeling, and second of all, you're captured, so I could come in here, and they could charge me anything they want, because I have to spend money now. It just doesn't make sense, it doesn't feel free, it doesn't fit with the environment, so I'm going to have to give some criticism. This is not going to work. You can't force people to spend money here. That's not how capitalism works. I bought this beer, a small one for 37 Rand, which is not a terrible price, but it's also not a great price. But uh, yeah, it's a beautiful space, but a cuck idea. No vlog can end on a negative vibe. That's not cool. So it's a beautiful space here and it's got loads of potential. But be nice to vloggers and people that want to promote your place. And uh, you know, make people feel welcome. Because we are all tribal people and we all want to feel welcome in this space and hang out. But I must say, this vlog was such an such a positive experience. I had such amazing conversations with people. And uh, it's just a good vibe around this area. And, yeah, wilderness, hey man, what can I say? It was good.